Walter, I want to understand what are human beings. We think we're unique, and the only way to test that is to look at other animals, the whole animal kingdom, the spectrum. Um, and what are some of those ways that humans are unique from animals? We think of free will, morality, consciousness, but you know, animals have elements of all of those things. Yeah, so, how do you begin to differ differ So, how do you begin to differentiate humans? Well, people have proposed many different factors to differentiate animals from humans. Let's just focus on free will because. Uh, that's a particularly important one that many people have cited. Sure. Um, a lot of people try to understand free will in terms of souls. And then, you know, animals don't have souls, we do. But how do you tell they don't have souls? I don't know where people get that idea from. Or how do you tell we do? Or how do you tell we do? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, and of course, there are religious traditions that say humans were created in God's image and animals weren't. Uh, and therefore, we can be spontaneous and act without being caused to act one way or the other, and they can't. And again, you know, where do they get that idea from? Where's the evidence? Um, as we've learned more and more about humans and about animals, we actually have learned that humans are a lot more like animals in many more respects uh, than our predecessors thought. But I still think there's a difference. Uh, as my friend Mike Gazaniga says, there can be a phase shift, just like between liquid water and ice when it passes a certain threshold. And humans are vastly different from animals in many, many important ways. Uh, let me just mention two. Uh, the first is control, and the second is moral judgment. Okay. So with regard to control, animals usually act on instincts. And what that means is they have less control over how they behave in certain circumstances. They're just going to run into the situation if they see food there when they shouldn't be. That's why we can catch them so easily. Uh, and they're less flexible so that when they are put in an environment that they're not used to, they often do crazy things, whereas humans can sometimes figure out what to do. So we've got more flexibility, we've got more control than they do, and that's essential to this question of free will. It's that control, it's that flexibility uh, that leads us to think that we're free and hence morally responsible in a way that other animals are not. Well, you could train animals. So you can train a dog not to, to go to the food until you say go. Absolutely, you can. And then once you've trained them to not go to the food unless they say go, well, now they've got a new kind of behavior pattern, mm -hmm. but is it going to be flexible? Mm -hmm. Suppose you change the type of food. It's no longer kibbles, it's, you know, a steak. Mm -hmm. Well, are they going, is the training going to mm -hmm. carry over or not? How is a dog going to decide whether well, they're either going to do it or not? How does a human decide they're going to think about the situation and what reasons they have to go after the food and what reasons they have not to go after the food, and they're going to make their behavior fit the circumstances in a way that animals are not as good at. So, so it's Remember, a it's a matter of degree. Yeah. It's not on off. Sure, but it's a flexibility in yes. the control. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So that's the first difference. Okay. The, the second difference is that often when humans do things or don't do things, they're doing them because they think morally they ought to. It's the right thing to do. Uh -huh. Or they're not doing it because they think morally it's wrong and I shouldn't do it. Now, when the animal goes after the food or doesn't go after the food, they're not thinking it's morally wrong one way or the other. They're, they're not thinking about moral rules at the level of abstraction that humans are engaged in. And that makes a big difference to moral responsibility as well. Because traditionally, in the insanity defense in most legal systems since the 1500s, it's been said that you're not fully morally responsible if you don't understand that what you're doing is morally wrong. If you really lack that understanding of moral rightness and moral wrongness, moral responsibility doesn't really make much sense. We don't hold animals responsible for anything. Exactly. Morally. Exactly. I mean, you may put them in cages because you don't want them hurting people, but it's not because they're immoral. Exactly. And it's not just animals, it's young, young kids as well. Um, you know, everybody's kid has at one point, they've turned to the father and said, I hate you, daddy. Well, wait a minute. This kid knew it was going to hurt your feelings. 
right? They knew exactly what they were doing. They did it in order to hurt your feelings. And yet, you don't hold them morally responsible because they don't really appreciate the wrongness of what they're doing. So for animals, for young children, we're not holding them morally responsible because they don't appreciate the moral wrongfulness of their action. And then we get a very fascinating case. What about psychopaths? What about people who, because of genetics or whatever, are fashioned in such a way that they just can't really appreciate the wrongness of what they're doing, and yet they do horrible things? Well, the legal system is still going to throw them in jail and say they're responsible because it's not safe to let them out. But there's a, a problem there because now you're punishing them when there's some serious questions about whether they're fully morally responsible in the way a normal criminal is. Uh, and the alternative would not be let them out on the street, of course. Nobody wants that. That's just going to make all law-abiding citizens their victims. But the alternative would be to treat them more like an animal, to say, we need to confine them in a cage and make sure that the rest of society is safe from their mischief, uh, but not pretend that it's because they're morally responsible uh, and that we're punishing them like a normal person. Instead, to say it's more like a young child who doesn't really appreciate the wrongfulness of what they're doing. So I think there's at least one big difference, an important difference, between humans, at least most humans, and other animals. Uh, and that has to do with free will and moral responsibility. Because humans have more control and more flexibility, and because they appreciate the moral wrongfulness of what they're doing, or at least most humans do, that gives humans this free will and responsibility that makes us special in the world. And you don't need to believe in souls or religion in order to see that.